Hey, Wonder Essie here. Today, I'm in a place called Tehachapi. If you've ever heard of Tehachapi, it's probably for one of two reasons. One, that little feet song where he talks about going from Tehachapi to Tonopah. Or two, if you're a railroad buff, you may have heard of this place I'm at called the Tehachapi Loop. Basically, what this is is exactly what it sounds like, a loop. Okay, that might not be super impressive to you if you're not into railroads, but it's one of the seven engineering feats of the railroad world. I mean, if you look at a map, you see the Sierra Nevada mountains kind of run in a line north to south, and they sort of divide the Mojave Desert from the California coast. And to get to my mom's house, which I'm headed to now for Thanksgiving, from my place in Vegas, I have to cross the Sierra Nevadas. So I only have a few options. I can go all the way up to Reno and cross over Donner Pass on I-80, but that's kind of out of my way to get to my mom's house and it can also be snowed in in the winter time. Then I also have the option of going over one of the squirrely passes through Yosemite, like the uh, Tioga Pass, but that's really windy, really crowded with tourist traffic, and it's closed uh, seasonally, so actually it's probably already closed now because they probably already got snow. Then the third pass, is down here in good old Tehachapi. Kind of takes you from uh, like the town of Mojave into Bakersfield. And it runs through these beautiful low rolling brown oak covered hills. It's gorgeous country. Anyway, it's not that big a deal for me to drive over this pass because I'm in my trusty Toyota 4Runner. But what about the trains? It's really hard for the trains to get over the Sierra Nevada mountain range. I think there's probably a train tracks that goes over Donner Pass up north, but what about down here in the south? How are they supposed to get uh, rail freight from the ports near Los Angeles out to, you know, Vegas and places east? Well, they have to lug it in a train all the way up over this Tehachapi Pass, and it's a doozy. In order for them to get the freight goods from down there in the valley, well, that's actually Bakersfield, way in the distance where you can see that nasty haze. But in order to get the goods up and over this pass, I guess the grade is pretty steep. So what they had to do here was they built, I don't know if you can see, they built the train track in a loop. <laughs> you know, instead of like, making it zigzag like uh, switchbacks on a trail. They just made it loop-de-loop -loop up, 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 up the hill and all the way over the pass. You can see those other people stopped here. That's what that crying sound was too. There's a baby. It's a popular tourist attraction. I think it's really cool that people actually stop to check this kind of thing out. In this day and age when we have so many other distractions, it's cool that people are still interested in these good old fashioned marvels of engineering. Man, I can't tell you how excited I am to finally be checking this place out. I must have driven over this pass dozens of times on my way to my mom's house in Northern California, but I'm always in a hurry or I don't have time to stop, whatever. Well, today I finally have time to stop and I'm super stoked. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have all friggin' day to stand here and wait for the train to come, but I'm in luck. According to the little sign that's posted back there, something like 36 trains a day pass through here. So I'm guessing that's like one every 20 minutes or so. And I've been here for about 15 minutes already, so the 310 to Yuma should be on its way. I might have to sit here and wait for a couple trains to pass though, because in order to get the full effect of this loop, I guess the train has to be long enough to where it actually loops over itself. Like the engine comes all the way up ahead and then crosses back over the caboose. Okay, there's a couple of uh, historical signs here that kind of tell you a little bit about it. You can read the whole thing if you want. But basically it just says that from this spot you can see a portion of the world-renowned loop, which was completed in 1876. So basically it says a 4,000 foot train will cross 77 feet above its rear cars in the tunnel below. Okay, I guess I can kind of see what we're looking for here. When a train eventually does show up, depending on which way it's going, uh, say it's coming from west to east, It'll come out, I don't know if you can see, like right where those two little white things are, that's the tunnel entrance. So it'll come out from between those and it'll loop around 
on the track, gradually climbing up, 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 and then up over the mountains. If the train is coming from east to west, then it'll come down over the mountains. It'll follow the loop down, 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 around, 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 curve around that central mountain, and then it'll enter the tunnel right between those two white posts. And then this sign tells you basically a little bit more about it. It says this steep line averages 2.2% in gradient in its 28 miles of length. The Tehachapi Pass Railroad line was cut through solid and decomposed granite by up to 3,000 Chinese laborers all the way from Canton, China, who used picks, shovels, horse-drawn carts, and blasting powder. This single track line, essentially unchanged, is still in constant use today, 122 years after its completion. It passes an average of 36 freight trains each day. Hmm, I've been here for like 20, 30 minutes now. I still haven't seen a train. I mean, like the sign said, th 36 trains pass per day. It's like so. one train every 20 minutes or so. And I've been here longer than 20 minutes. So what gives to Hatchapi Loop? I want my money back. Oh my God, you guys, I just heard a train horn. I think we're finally in business. I hear it. Look, it's coming. I hear that train a coming. There it is, coming around the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. Actually, I'm seeing the sunshine right now, shining off the front of that beautiful train. Coming down from Barstow, headed for Bakersfield. <laughs> how cool, man. I just hope it's 4,000 feet long so we can see it loop over itself. Dude, how much fun is it to be that engineer and get to drive this route? <laughs> BNSF, Burlington National San Francisco. Isn't that what that stands for? Apologies again for not knowing my railroad stuff. I'm not really a railroad buff. I'm just a buff of stuff in general. I'm a stuff buff. There it goes, curving around. Look, going around the loop. <laughs> I mean, imagine this track was built in 1876 and they're still using it today. It's pretty impressive. All right, so we got the engineer is about halfway up the loop. Train shows no signs of ending, so it might be a 4,000 footer. Keep our fingers crossed. You can see the engineer car is doubling back alongside the rest of the train. Well, I feel like Howard Cosell or some sports announcer, like now I have an appreciation for what those guys do. Try to keep the patter up and make things interesting while they're waiting for something to happen. Still can't see the back of the train. So that's a good sign. I think it's gonna be a 4,000 footer, guys. Oh, I can see it. You see that way in the distance, the orange. <laughs> Engine car is poking its nose out around that loop. Holy wowzers, look at that. It's almost looped itself already, but there's no end in sight. The train just keeps on coming. Oh wait, it's gonna stop. Or maybe it's not gonna stop. Maybe it just has to go really slow when it gets to this loop. Oh man, it's going so slow, it's almost stopped. In fact, is it stopped? Oh, I don't know, weird. I wonder why it stopped like that. Interesting. Okay, this train still hasn't moved. It's probably like 10 minutes later, but I hear another train horn or whistle, whatever you call it, coming, but it sounds like it's coming from that way, from Bakersfield. So maybe there's another train that's coming up the loop, and this train here is waiting for that train to pass first. Okay, it sounds like that other train is getting close. Let's see what happens. I'm guessing that Oh, that train is coming from, well, obviously it's coming from Bakersfield down there, so it must be coming underground, we can't see it, and then it's going to emerge between those white posts and then come out towards the orange uh, engineer cars from the other train. Oh, uh, look, here it comes, you can see it is. It's coming out from underground. <laughs> it's about to hit those goal posts <laughs> and come up. Oh, wow, this is a trip. I don't know if this is unusual or what to see two trains at once on the Tehachapi loop, but it's pretty cool. So maybe this one will loop itself too. It might be cool to see a double loop. God, this train must really be moving slow because it had to drag all the way uphill. The train that we watched earlier was coming downhill. Maybe it had to rest its brakes. That's why it stopped. All right, train any day now. Oh, okay, look, there it came out from behind that hill. So now you can see this train has yellow. Oh, I think this one might be Union Pacific. I feel like Union Pacific engineer cars might be yellow. 
And how would I know that? Well, I may or may not have posed for nude photos on one in the past. <laughs> no comment. Oh, well, this train is plowing along. And you can see over there to the right, still coming out of the entrance. No end in sight. So it's about to loop itself. That's cool. Okay, here it comes. Do, do, do. Here. Ooh, it looks like uh, Union Pacific. Yay! You can barely see it. Look at that, it's looping itself. I don't know if you can see, but the part of the train that's going uphill, the engineer, just passed the back part of the train. And if you look real close, I'm gonna zoom in, you can actually see them both moving past each other. It's kind of trippy. It's really hard to see. See that? What a trip. They're both moving in the same direction because it's a loop. That is so friggin' cool. So I wonder why this train is just hauling ass over the pass and that other train just sitting there waiting. I don't know if it's waiting for this train to pass or what. After this train finally passes, I'll hang out for a few minutes and see if the other train fires up and starts going. Wow, when you watch this though, it really gives you an idea of how much friggin' weight is being dragged by these things. I mean, look how many cars and cars and cars there are. I mean, an empty rail car by itself weighs a lot let alone all the junk that it's stocked with, you know? Coal, oil, gas, I don't know. Flip-flops, eggs, <laughs> all kinds of stuff travels by rail. I mean, it seems like such an old-timey technology, but hey, guess what? I think it's still considered to be pretty energy efficient compared to other modes of freight transportation. Oh, wow, okay, we finally got to the end of this train. Should be able to see it here just peeling away from the front part of the train right there see that that is the very end of the second train the tail so now that tail has to go around behind the old hill and then come out around there and then train number two will have completely cleared the loop and then we'll see if train number one does anything i wonder if the engineers like waved at each other when the first guy passed the second guy they probably all know each other you know it's probably a pretty small club railroad engineers oh gosh now you hear this grinding creaking well look the second the first train is moving too see that i don't know if you can tell but the second train has finally started moving as well. I guess because the, or excuse me, the first train has finally started moving again. I guess maybe because the second train's almost clear. I don't know, it's weird. <laughs> it's all kind of stuff going on in front of us right now. I'm trying to hold the camera still, but apologies if it's jerky because I'm kind of excited. <laughs> so the Bakersfield to Barstow train has almost totally cleared the loop. And the Barstow to Bakersfield train it's finally started moving again, and you can see it's starting to enter the tunnel up ahead. Listen to this unholy racket, even way up here. Holy cow. Okay, the Union Pacific, that's what I should call it. The Union Pacific and the BNSF. The Union Pacific, we see the last couple of cars, which again, I'm not sure if you call that a caboose or what, because it looks like an engine to me. But anyway, the last two yellow cars with the American flags on them there are just now heading over the old Tehachapi Pass. And then the BNSF, which you can see there disappearing into the trees, it's looping down and entering the tunnel to go down, down, down towards Bakersfield. Okay, let's say our goodbyes to the old Union Pacific from Bakersfield to Barstow. It's gonna disappear altogether from sight here in just a second. Going up, up, up over the pass. Barely see it through the trees. There she goes on her way to Barstow and points beyond. Probably stop in Vegas too, who knows. And then meanwhile, the BNSF train, the first one that we were watching, has finally resumed its loop and is rapidly being swallowed up by this tunnel going down, down, down into the earth. Okay, we're getting to the end, guys. Those two orange caboose cars or whatever you call them are almost going into the tunnel. I'm gonna zoom in one last time just so we catch that. Now, just to recap, this was the first train we watched coming up, or up and down, I guess. The Tehachapi Loop disappearing into the tunnel. Three, 
two, one, and there she goes on her way to Bakersfield or points beyond. <laughs> wow. I know it's pretty nerdy to geek out on a railroad, but I don't know. That just is pretty cool. Like, I like odd roadside quirky attractions, and I like uh, feats of engineering, and boy, this is both of those wrapped in a neat little bundle right off California 58. So next time you're passing through this way, I really recommend stopping to check this out. I mean, it's beautiful. There's plenty of parking on the side of the road. Just chill out here and have lunch while you wait for the next train to come by. And it's really interesting.